Before you begin your organic design triptych, you've got to take some photos of some organic objects. So as you can see from my uh, photos here, I went outside and I took a bunch of photos of a plant that I thought would be really good for this assignment. And let me show you why. So in this image, I was looking at the negative spaces between the branches. I was also looking at the variety of the widths of the branches. You can see there's some thicker and some thinner. And I also thought that the, uh, the, the, the green succulent plant had an interesting form. You know, the leaves have a kind of a volumetric shape. They're like almost like thick rounded cylinders. And uh, it, I thought it would make a, a more interesting drawing than just maybe a flat leafed plant. So that's why I took that image, and, and as I was taking it, I, I was really thinking about all of those things as I um, was looking at the image. Now, the other thing I want to mention is, in this particular assignment, it works much better if you have good, strong, direct lighting on the object you're photographing. One way to do that is to go outside and uh, take some photographs of... Uh, you know, maybe some plants or parts of trees or, or branches in the sunlight. So we get a lot of good, nice sunny days here in uh, Southern California, so you can do that. Now, once you get some good photographs, you've got to edit them. I'm going to edit this now, and it's already a square, but what I might want to do is I might want to change it a little bit, and I could rotate it, you know, if you want your branches to have uh, maybe more dynamic angles. You might want to rotate it a little bit more, and that looks pretty interesting. The other thing you can do as you are uh, working with your image and cropping it is you want to make sure that you keep it a square. So I just hit that bottom on the top right. It's yellow now. I'm going to click on square, and as I'm playing around with this image, the rule of thirds automatically pops up. So you can decide where you want to place your um, focal point, you know, based on the rule of thirds there. Maybe my focal point is going to be that, that uh, section of uh, the little green plants there. Now, as I'm looking at that, I realize that I don't really like that as much as my original. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to go back and start again. So I'm clicking edit and I'm going to click on um, crop and I'm going to play around a little bit but not too much with my focal point. And if you look at the upper left intersection, I'm going to make sure it's a square there, the upper left intersection, I'm just placing one of the, uh, the kind of the center of that group of the little green succulent plants and placing it right in the center and I, I think that works fine you know as you're editing that that'll happen to you you might come to a point and uh, it'll be like well I don't know I think I liked it better before so go back you can always go back now I'm going to play around with the color and the lighting the first thing I want to do is go to the saturation and lower it all the way so it's black and white now I'm going to have a good look at that image there's a couple things I might want to try. It looks a little bit uh, dark to me, so I think I want to raise the brightness a bit, maybe halfway, about halfway is 50. And the other thing I can do is I can also increase the contrast, but I don't want my light areas to get so washed out that I can't see any details. So what I'm looking for is a good range of values from very, very light to very, very dark, dark, rich blacks. And I also want uh, some mid-tones. So I want some light grays, some medium grays, and some dark grays. So that's gonna be very important with your image. So I think that is absolutely fine. I'm gonna say done with that. And now I'm just going to quickly work with a couple of these other images, going to edit, playing around with crop a little bit, making sure it's a square. And I think I'll place the focal point again of that succulent right there using rule of thirds, the intersection where the two squares come together on the bottom left. That looks great to me. 
and now I'm going to go in and uh, lower my saturation all the way and now it looks a little bit too much too many mid-tones I feel like I need to increase the brightness a little bit and then maybe increase ooh, that looks good increase the con the contrast okay so that's my second one and let me get a third uh, perhaps that one oh that looks pretty neat again I like the negative spaces uh, I would edit out a lot of that background information and, and maybe you know some of these green succulent um, uh, plants on the right side uh, but anyway I think you know that'll work pretty well for the third one and here I go editing it making sure it's a square square using rule of thirds to place my focal point I think that Y shape on that branch should be where the focal point is so let me kind of play around with getting that there oh that looks good okay I'm, I'm happy with that now, of course, I need to go over here to the uh, right and first adjust the saturation. Put that all the way down and then get into working maybe with the brightness. That looks a little dark, doesn't it? It's kind of cloudy when I took that picture. So I'm going to increase my brightness. Then I'm going to go to contrast. I'm going to increase that too. I think that, that'll work pretty well. So I'm going to say done. Okay, I now have my three images prepared now there's one other thing you can do if you don't want to go outside and photograph branches and actually I had started out photographing this dead tree that I have I thought that would be kind of interesting then I changed my mind you can also make a setup for yourself at home now you can see here what I did was I took my reading light and I put it on its brightest I took a sheet of uh, Bristol board I put it on my desk there cleared everything else off and I took a tangerine and I unpeeled it and I tried to make the peels into some interesting shapes and of course I sh shine that really bright light on it and then I took a, a photograph of that and made it a square now if you're using an image uh, well not just an image but an object an organic object that's more like something like a peeled orange or maybe I don't know a green pepper that you cut into different sections or you know some different types of vegetable um, what you want to do is you know do this shine a really bright light on it so you have interesting shapes of cast shadows that'll be part of your design you also want to make sure that you're cropping uh, three sides of your object either the object itself or a cast shadow what that does is it makes the shapes of the background uh, more defined and less just like sort of an object floating in a bunch of space you don't you don't want that Okay, so the next part of the uh, video, I'm going to show you how to use Pixlr to put these together into a triplet. <laughs> Not a triplet, a triptych. <laughs> there we go. Now I'm going to show you how to use the Pixlr app to arrange your photos into a triptych. I'm going to open it up. And you can see I already did it, but I'll do it again. So I'm clicking on the home page, and I'm going to click on collage. And then I will select the three images that I already edited in my photos. On the upper right, I'm clicking, clicking select three. Now, when the images uh, load, uh, you'll see that they automatically went into the correct uh, collage, but that probably won't happen for you, and you probably still have your, um, well, you might have it set on the two images together. You probably have it set there, right? Uh, because uh, for the last assignment, you had to upload them in using that uh, collage format, but now you want to scroll over so you get the three squares together in a horizontal line. And you will remember that uh, each image as it comes in, comes in zoomed in, and you have to click on each one, you know, with your finger and then pinch it together to zoom out. So with these images arranged as they are, I'm looking at the strong uh, branches in each one of those lines. I want them to create a sense of continuity uh, between each of the images. 
And in order to do that, I see that center image and I do like that in the center. And what I see is that it has a strong curve, curving around and, and down. And what I wanna do is I actually would like to take the image on the left put that on the right and then rotate it. So I've got a few things I want to play around with. Now watch watch as I switch these. And the reason I knew all this was because I already was playing around uh, with these images. So if I hold my finger down on the one that's selected, you know, surrounded with turquoise, I can move it. I can switch it up like that. I can put it right there and it'll switch places. Now, I think, and this has just happened and I was lucky with this, I love how that curve branch of the center image curves right into that Y-shaped branch on the left. I'm going to leave that alone. It really works perfectly. But there's uh, an issue uh, between the center image and the one on the right uh, because there's not a, a good sense of flow there. So what I'm going to do is highlight this, highlight that one there, and I am going to go to the edit button, which is in the top right there. And I'm going to go to my toolbox and I'm going to rotate it. Now I can rotate it several different ways. I can play around like that, rotate it like that. Uh, but what I know I want to do is I just want to rotate it using this button on the right to rotate it once and twice and then say done. And at that point, my image is all put together, done. And you can see that there's a really nice flow from one branch to the other. So there's a lot that you can do to edit these on uh, Pixlr. You can also, you know, play around with the zooming feature, you know, to see if you might have liked something better, which I don't, I like it just like that. So I'm gonna say next. And I'm going to say done, and I'm going to save that image onto my camera roll. Now I want to show you how to put a grid on one of those photos. So at this point, you may have really altered your images on Pixlr. So maybe the original images you started out with, you can't put a grid on. So what you're going to need to do is, and you probably already figured this out, if you edit this and you edit it into one square, and of course you can always undo that and edit the next square, but if we do it one square at a time and hit done, and then if I go to my uh, grid hashtag app and I hit the camera button, I go to photos, and I go to that image that I just edited, you'll see that the correct grid pops up and it probably will for you too. You wanna to use a grid with four squares of cross and four squares down. It's the same grid you used on your chiaroscuro uh, image that you did uh, for your last design. But if the right grid isn't popping up, just go into settings, that was, at, in the, uh, that was the upper left, those little lines with the dots, go into settings, Make sure you have grid type set for square. It does not matter if it's rows or columns. And then you wanna set your row or column to four. Now you can set it for a lot more, which who, who wants to do that? Uh, it would be really accurate, but uh, that no, we're not gonna do that. So here we go, four and then back, and then you're really ready to save it and you just hold your finger on the image, save grid and image, and that's just gonna save right into your camera roll like that.